afternoon, welcome to the dyno. I'm here to do a quick video today, uh, another one in uh, my bike carb series, just covering some of the basics on uh, bike carb conversions. Um, we've actually got in today a very nice uh, Lotus Europa, uh, South African car, you can see, freshly imported. Um, owners sent it to us and he has enough of basically the, the standard fuel injection was playing up. Uh, so he's decided he wants carbs on it, he's a bit of an old school guy, um, so he's decided to convert it to carburetors rather than the original fuel injection. So the engine that's fitted to this is uh, it's quite an interesting one, so I'll just bring you around and I can show you. It is actually uh, the very rare Toyota 4Age, 4Age EE. Um, so it's the 20 valve version, sorry, not the not the 16. So the 16 valve we obviously got in this country, but the uh, 20 valve that we've got in here uh, was only available in um, other countries. This one's come from South Africa, obviously. Uh, so as I say, the customer decided he wants to go to carbs rather than uh, the standard fuel injection. So we have fitted a set of our ZX9 bike carbs, as you can see there, uh, and our trumpet kit. Uh, it's not the carbs that I want to cover today. It's actually the EFI to um, carbs conversion uh, because <coughs> the main thing with this is uh, we have a three bar fuel pressure from uh, from the original EFI fuel pump if not more uh, on some systems it can be up to four bar four and a half bar uh, and we need to get it right down to uh, three psi for the carburetors so we do sell this regulator here uh, which is an EFI to carb regulator uh, I will link this in the description below uh, and this is basically designed to bring that massive pressure of three and a half, four bar down to the three PSI that's needed. So we have an in uh, into the side of the regulator uh, and then an out going to the carburetors and underneath is another out which runs back to the fuel tank using the standard fuel return. Now the problem with that is that in some cases um, the regulator will not bring the pressure far enough down and the reason for that was so we get people email in saying oh, I've bought this regulator won't bring the pressure far enough down uh, which it can be the case but the, the reason for that is the flow back to the tank so it might be that you've only got a small pipe going back to the tank it might be that the return is going to the bottom of the tank as it is on this car which means that uh, you're trying to overcome the head of fuel as well as um, the fuel pressure from the fuel pump so the quick answer to that, uh, and, uh, well there's two answers, either you're gonna, you can make your fuel line larger going back to the tank and make sure it's going into the top, that may resolve it, but one of the quicker ways to do it is to put a little restrictor into the supply line. So as you can see I've got two <coughs> hose clamps, we've broken the hose here uh, and what we've done is we've put an aluminium restrictor in there with a carburetor jet um, screwed into it. So we couldn't get the pressure below 6 psi. Um, as it was, so we put this restrictor in with 1.6 millimeter main jet from a carb from these carbs actually, um, and that has brought the pressure down to the three psi that is required. So, if you bought our regulator, our carb EFI to carb regulator, and you can't get your fuel pressure down to the required amount, these carbs will sometimes be okay at five psi, but generally they want to be the three psi, even a bit less. Uh, so if you're up at six like we were, uh, this was actually flooding one carb, um, so we like I say got it down to three psi, absolutely fine now, no problem. So that's the answer basically. If you can restrict the flow to it, um, a, a really quick, easy way is just to put a hose clamp around one of the rubber hoses, just as a temporary fix, and see if you can get the pressure down that way. If you can, then you know that if you just put a restrictor in that line, then uh, you're going to get your pressure down to the required amount. So with that in mind, um, I've actually tuned this car already, but I'm going to do a quick video of it anyway, but just because it sounds fantastic. It revs to just under eight, uh, makes peak power at seven six, uh, and it really is, uh, yeah, it's a nice engine. It's the first one that we've done actually, first one we've, uh, we've had in the dyno, so uh, it's quite nice to see. First of all, I just thought I'd show you this really retro 70s interior. Absolutely lovely. I think this car's fantastic. 
Um, it's got some real character uh, and very good condition as well, having come from South Africa. Um, so anyway, uh, the good old 4H20 valve has lived up to exactly, I believe, factory power uh, and done 161 brake horsepower, which is pretty good going. We didn't really expect to exceed any factory power, given that they already came with individual throttle bodies anyway. Um, but as I say, the, the customer wanted to go the, the carb route, um, so that's fine. Uh, so yeah, we've got the 160 brake. Um, so there's the graph, if I can spin you around. So yeah, 160 brake horsepower out of the 4H20 valve uh, on a set of ZX9 bike carbs.